Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Endless Space 2. The galaxy has become a complicated place. Uh, we have a lot of things going on, we're about to lose a system, we're about to fight a war, but man, just look at, this is beautiful, this is beautiful stuff. Alright, let's check out our diplomatic options here. So the Lumeris are at war with us now. They declared they're going to take Jaya from us, I don't think I can stop them, but I do think we can get it back. They're also at war with the Sophons, so that's good for us. Um, that'll help unite us. But I don't really need to... Uh... My, my initial thought here was, if the Sophons are not at war with them, I would try to drag the Sophons into the war, because um, Sophon space and Lumera space are right next to each other. I wonder if we could get anybody else involved. So Yui and the, uh, the Riftborn are the other two... Are not the Riftborn, the Vodiani are the other two that are right pressed up against them. Let's see if there's any chance that we can talk them into joining the conflict. Oh, you know what? Check this out. So this um, this blue versus sort of like red-orange uh, slice that you see with each faction is a visual representation of our influence pressure on each other. We have so overwhelmed the United Empire with influence that we actually could make some diplomatic demands on them. I haven't interacted with that system very much, uh, and I'm pretty sure that it's different now than it used to be, so that's something we'll do in a second. Uh, we're pretty much over... We're over-influencing people, mostly. You can see where uh, the fact that our score is currently higher than the Fodiani score is putting a lot of pressure on them. We're actually getting negative pressure from Horatio's score. Uh, the UE score, dif score difference is a little bit of what's going on here, but... Largely, we have uh, a lot of pressure on them because of border friction and systems covered by influence. So the fact that we, over on Perseus, pushed their border back and now have uh, taken their planet into our border has given us a huge amount of pressure. So we're going to be able to make some demands on them. We have some score difference pressure here. Uh, they are out influencing us on the border, and that's going to make it difficult for us to deal with them. we got to fix that. Uh, but let's talk to these guys. What's up? One meeting with you was already one too many today. Okay, at our last meeting, let's just remember, you threatened to murder me. I mean, you didn't say that explicitly, but we know that's what was going on. So, alright. Refusal penalty, economic sanctions. Oh wow, if they refuse our demand, we completely tank their economy. For ten turns. So we... The other empire will be able to choose between accepting the selected term or suffering the selected penalty. This additional term may involve other empires. Oh. Okay. Oh, and I could change up the refusal penalty. So I have a couple of options. We could go for this thing here, which I think is pretty great. Uh, minus 75% influence, a diplomatic uh, penalty. Minus 75% movement points on their ships. Or plus 400% military ship cost on their systems. Hmm. So we could do the war supplies embargo. And then if they refuse, we could use that as an opportunity to attack them. That's an interesting thing to do. Obviously, it's not what we're going to do right now. But that's an interesting concern for, uh, for later or for next game, perhaps. So let's see what we can uh, demand from them. Three population units will be sent from their most populated system. We take one of their heroes hostage for 10 turns. Ooh, wow, that's a lot of science, actually. Or we just demand that they give us stuff. Okay, diplomatic pressure is we could, we could take a tech. Oh, wow, you can just demand a technology. This is awesome. This system is way better than it used to be. Uh, we should take, uh, we should take a tech if they have one that's relevant. Improved weapons made of Hyperium is totally a relevant thing, right? We have a lot of Hyperium, and we desperately need better weapons technology. Do they have access to more advanced weapons than that? High-energy magnetics. Uh, ubiquitous surveillance. <laughs> the thing is, though, this is a low-tier tech. We could research this ourselves in a couple of turns. Maybe what I should do instead is go for economic tribute. And we'll just use that science to boost through that tech and maybe some better ones. 
Okay, oh, so that's our that's our advanced term. All right, so we don't have the ability to force the alliance departure, declare war on a third party, cancel an existing agreement. I would really love to make them declare war on a third party. But it looks like I don't have access to that for some reason. This is a system we're going to have to dig into in uh, in more detail. Yeah, all the filters, okay. Uh, well, that being the case, I guess we'll take the economic tribute as our advanced term. But I'd love to, I, we need to figure this out because that's a, that's a thing we could make a lot of use of in the future. And then just give me some stuff. Like, I don't even know what. Give me some adamantium. Am I allowed to just demand all of it? I mean, they might refuse, right? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Antimatter is actually the thing we really need. Because I've spent a lot of it recently. This had better be good. One meeting with you was already one too many today. So you actually don't really even have enough antimatter for that to be worthwhile. Alright, let's demand all of their adamantian and economic tribute. Or else we will blow up your economy with our economic sanctions. What's up? The Empire will not tolerate this. Fair enough. That hurts them way more than uh, not getting the stuff hurts me. We like you, All right. but that doesn't mean we're on speed dial. Okay, we can just... I'm not going to demand they remove our fleets, their fleets from our sphere of influence. In fact, I would like to invite all of their fleets into our sphere of influence to defend against our mutual enemy. So, could we... Okay, they're down with an alliance. I'm not sure that I want to do that. Both you and the other empire will gain an incremental boost depending on the other, depending on each other's main population. Uh, it, mm. I'm assuming this will be a science boost in both of our cases. I don't know that we actually do want an alliance. An alliance would be a good way to... Oh, the cooperative boost is dependent on the alliance. Yeah, an alliance would be good if they weren't willing to go to war with the Valters in any other way, because it would force them into our war. But given that they're already at war with the Valters, and I don't particularly want to um, to tie myself to their victory, I think we're good with them. Uh, so let's see if we can get the Vodhyani into the war. Speak swiftly. Uh, I guess I could... Okay... Would this? Would you do this? You would not do this. Okay. What if I gave you some potatoes? You know how everybody loves potatoes. Okay. Uh, that sounded like she was down. Hey, that helped. Okay. Hey, we figured out something that the potatoes are good for. And then, um, dude, I don't know, a little bit of Hyperium, maybe like two hundred Hyperium. Let's try 100. Okay. Well, We definitely don't want to be in a long-term alliance with these guys, but a temporary alliance of convenience that helps to uh, helps to put pressure on the Lumeris, I think, would be valuable. Okay, so we're not really making any headway here. She likes that we're offering Hyperion, but the amount of Hyperion doesn't seem to matter too much. My guess is that she needs, like, 60 or something, and the 100 is just over the amount that she's looking for, so additional stuff is not mm -hmm. going to help. What if we did this? Are you down with the cooperative protocol? I don't even know what this will give us, but I want it. We have a ton of influence. Let's try, like... Okay, she does not like something about that. Okay, we'll give us incremental bonuses at the cost of 150 influence per turn, which I think we can afford. Plus three experience per turn on hero. Okay, so actually, okay. screw that noise. I don't like... I don't think that's worthwhile. Oh, this is going to put us at war with Horatio, though. I don't know if I want to do that. Hold on. Horatio's pretty far from us. You'd have to go through the, through the Sofuns to get to us. I don't currently see any of his fleets. I have seen his fleets. I wish I'd taken better notice of their, uh, their attack level.
His score is slightly higher than ours. It might be... It might be dangerous. All right, we won't do that then. You test my patience. Did we get Speak a swiftly. piece out of you, though? No, okay. She was only willing to do the alliance because of the fact that it helps her against the Horatio, I guess. You or, you know what? Patience. Maybe, Speak maybe swiftly. peace... I know this is, like, fascinating to watch me jump back and forth in menus. Maybe peace with the resources would actually be doable. Because remember, every every society we're at peace with gives us some bonuses. Mm -hmm. About a little bit of adamantium as well? I don't know, like, 50? I'm sure she needs high-tech resources. Okay, we'll do this. Even in war, I must see to the needs of the church. Okay, so we don't uh, we don't really get anything out of out of that in terms of our war, but going to peace with them means that we have uh, we have ten extra approval on all of our systems. We do have another law slot too. That's true. We went up a uh, here. We went up a a stage of empire development, so we unlocked a new uh, a new law slot for our federation. And we unlocked and immediately succeeded at the Deed Preserver of Nations. So the Deeds become unlocked once anyone in the galaxy has gotten to the correct tier, I believe. Uh, and we have 60 population in our empire, so we got it and immediately... We unlocked the Deed and immediately completed it, earning the Federated Procurement Office, which is an empire improvement that lowers the cost of retrofitting. Which is good, because I think we're about to need to do some retrofitting. Okay, what else? Uh, this ended. That's fine. Right, we got him and we had to spend his points. Construction completed on a bunch of worlds, but we already have stuff queued up for them. We are going to need to start researching a new tech. So let's talk about weapon systems. We have access to a couple of, uh, a couple of tiers of weapon systems. We may finally use our our science tier jumping bonus. So, like, what do these look like? 92 DPS slugs. What's our income rate on these resources? 11 and 10. Okay, so they're both... They're about equally valuable. And this, uh, this notation here means that getting one of these will lock the other one. So we have to decide now, do we want advanced energy weapons or advanced ballistic weapons? Where's that fleet? Oh. The fleet from Jaya fled. They still dropped off their troops, though. We're going to have to deal with that. Okay, their defenses are entirely ballistic. So let's grab advanced game theory. Two turns, we will have access to some very nice weapons. How good are these relative to what we have now? So like 40 DPS, beams, 12, oh, this is a shield interference beam. It's an EMP weapon. So it's specifically for dropping people's shields. Or 68 DPS laser weapons. Uh, compared to the current stuff that's on our ships, like 31 DPS. 27, yeah. The big upgrade is what it is. Alright, so in two turns we'll be able to make some pretty slick stuff. We probably just want to wait until then to produce uh, uh, any new ships. We have these guys on the way. Oh, we should uh, order them to move. They had already expended their movement points for the turn, but not everybody had. We discovered a planet. From orbit, this planet is visually uninteresting. Silent and undeveloped, it turns beneath the glare of an indifferent star. Well, I mean, aren't they all? History and legend claim it is one of the great centers of virtual study, however, and the seat of the sub-faction commonly known as the Cabal of Pure Thought. Uh, so, virtual here uh, refers to the virtual Endless. The great civil war between the Endless that appears to have completely destroyed their society was fought between the virtual Endless and the concrete Endless. The Virtual Endless wanted to convert everybody's consciousness to data and upload the whole society into the advanced computers that they had created. Uh, you know, they wanted to usher in the singularity. While the Concrete Endless thought that probably it was a good idea to continue to have 
physical bodies. I'm assuming biological bodies, but I guess I don't even know for sure if the Endless were a flesh and blood race. Um, but anyway, the factions came to blows, and as far as we know, that's why there's no Endless around anymore, is because they managed to super weapon each other out of existence, basically. Should these tales be true, the planet would be rich with power generation centers, networks, and a planet-wide infrastructure of superconducting cables. Until there's a way to render these visible, however, the planet merely appears as it is. Where did I find this? Oh, the Argosi found it. Which means that somehow it's uninhabited. We could just... Plus eight dust per turn on population, plus seven food per turn on population. So it would fill quickly... And it would give us a ton of money. It's a small planet, so it doesn't have a lot of population slots, but... Yeah, Jesus, look at the outputs. 15, 6, 12. Jeez. We should do this. Are we cool on... Yeah, we have, we have a slot for population. Yeah, okay. I'm in. Let's do it. Fail. So you can zoom way in on planets and see them in a little bit more detail. I don't make use of this very often because it doesn't really uh, <laughs> do anything. It's not actually very beneficial. But um, it does, first of all, allow you to bask in the game's extremely beautiful art. And secondly, uh, developed planets actually look really neat, especially planets that have cool anomalies. You can actually see the anomalies a lot of the time. Cyberflora is maybe a bad example, but you can see there's a space station and some satellites and stuff. Because we've got this developed. Oh, Kessler Syndrome. So Kessler Syndrome is there's a bunch of space junk everywhere. So you can actually see all of this, like, to old torn-up satellites and stuff. This game is so... All of the presentation aspects are just so beautiful. Okay, so we've got a new colony here on Pollux. Uh, let's get our basic stuff built. This'll, this'll grow quickly, though. Do I want to pull Opbot for this? Where, where is Opbot right now? Because he needs to complete stuff to level up. Right, he's most of the way through level 8 already. He's on Beerus. Oh, that's right. Beerus is actually about to complete another pretty large thing. He probably should stay here. We have the resources for a level 4 or a level 3 modernization. I'm thinking maybe Beertus? I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just thinking about the fact that it's going to give us a bunch of influence. I guess Beertus maybe doesn't desperately need a lot of, uh, a lot of industry. Is Eridanus already level 3? It's not. Okay, it should probably be Eridanus. So I was thinking it would be nice to push back against blue and red in terms of, um, in terms of influence so that we would get the pressure to maybe make some demands on them. But Eridanus will do an okay job of pushing on red. And also we want it to be intensely productive because it's going to be the site of one of the obelisks. And 61 turns is an unacceptably long amount of time. Boy, 61 turns. That <laughs> Isn't this one of our better industrial systems? No, not really. It will be, though, when we finish the system upgrade. Okay, so let's take care of this. I'm happy to see that, that uh, Lumeris fleet fled, but I'm not 100% sure why they did it. So they've brought 700 manpower worth of troops. We only have 400 defensive troops. I think we're going to take conscription. We're going to lose a point of population to gain a bunch of manpower. We're just going to conscript a bunch of people into the into the defense forces. We could do prevent or protect system as well, which would uh, make it harder for them to kill us. But I think, especially given that all of our uh, all of our manpower is in armor, upgraded armor, which should be very good against their infantry heavy uh, build. I think we should conscript, and we've not actually watched any of these ground battles. Let's go ahead and do that. I, there's no uh, real tactical benefit to doing it. We just haven't done it yet, and they're pretty. They look neat. And you do get a little bit more detailed information this way, like... The simulation runs whether you watch it or not. So 
So their armor is not really doing that much damage to our armor, and we're really doing some work against their uh, their infantry. They destroyed our exoscience stations, and we lost a point of population from the war in addition to the point of population that we conscripted. I actually think we'll be able to hold them off. We should pop into the troop breakdown screen, and we should improve our, uh, our armor. Plus 20% damage, plus 50% damage specifically against infantry. Oh, dust. Dust is expensive. I should have remembered to do this before the battle. Okay, and we're probably going to have to, like, sell some more stuff on the market to remain fiscally solvent. But okay, that's not so bad. Uh, do I want to disband these guys? I don't want the Lumeris to come back and blow them up. Let's just drop them into the hangar. Who else still needs orders? You still need orders. Well... I suppose we should explore over here. We should see what's connected to our new colony. I guess this is probably this constellation, right? It, like, runs up to here. And it's just that the Unfallen haven't settled further north because of pirates. Yeah, it's part of Skullum. Okay. All right, let's see how things go here. We're a couple of turns off of being able to build really badass ships, and I'd like to not build anything until we can build uh, build them with the modules already installed because we can't afford retrofits. Okay, so we have those other troops coming. Hmm. I'm pretty sure still no, right? So put us at war with... So put us at war with the UE. Hmm. No, not while we're still at war with the Lumaris. Okay, I'm going to conscript again. I, we're, like, we're burning population at, at an incredible rate, but... If we can hold the planet, that's definitely better than losing it. A cooperative quest has started. The Academy and the heroes who refine their skills there can turn the tides of battles and vastly enrich systems. It is not surprising, therefore, that all civilizations in this galaxy secretly de uh, desire insight and control of that powerful establishment. Word has come out from the establishment, however, that they seek additional growth and recruitment from the lesser civilizations of the galaxy. Apparently, the secretive leader of the Academy feels that these less powerful communities of sentience are underrepresented and underserved on the stage of galactic diplomacy. His request seems a bit odd, but there is advantage to be gained and knowledge to be gleaned. So we gotta encourage the growth and progress of minor civilizations. If 40 more units of minor civ population are born in the next 20 turns, some people will get some honestly pretty small rewards. Rewards I don't really care about. We're not even gonna pay attention to that. Oh, this thing ended. Uh-oh. How's our approval level? It's actually extremely good. Never mind, we're good. We're taking care of our people. Academy has leveled up. He finished a bunch of geological vaults all in the same time. It's pretty weird. Here on Beertus, we probably ought to focus on influence for a minute. So this isn't a huge amount, but it is very, very low cost. How much are we missing? We have three. Okay, we're extremely far off of running another level of modernization. Oh, we're getting close to another trade company. Okay, let's sell some resources. So antimatter is still by far the most valuable. But we have a lot of extra Hyperium. We'll sell, like, 150 Hyperium. That'll buy us some time. Our economy is very export-based. Oh, man, we have to... Well, we could buy the Pirate Mark off. 
Yeah, you know what? Yes, I will buy the pirates off. That's not great. We really need money, but I just don't... I don't have the... Uh, the spare ships around to deal with another hostile force. His population is tanking so badly. Well, we can we can send population there from Eridanus. Probably what we'll do. How's this going? It'll only be a couple more turns until we can convert Talitha. I don't know if I will. I think it'll... To some degree, it's going to depend on how the thing with the Lumeris is going, because the UE might respond to the, uh, the takeover with war, although it does sound like they have their hands full with other stuff as well. All right, let's boost the pacifists, because the militarists are going to get a big boost from the war happening, but I'd like to keep the pacifists in uh, charge. Not so much that I want to pay influence for one of our advanced election manipulation methods, but... Ooh... It's looking pretty bad. Uh, that was that was better. That system had a lot of pacifist votes in it. Okay, we maintain. We've unlocked the plus 33% damage on weapon modules law. Good old scientists, they're a very good party. Unfortunately, that's extremely expensive. Plus four uh, influence per turn per population point is probably not something that we can do. All right. At this point, I think we can stop conscripting. We'll go into protect system mode. Ah, they destroyed our miners' union. Really laying it on with the uh, with the bombardment. Okay. Well, we have a fleet in place. This only affects strategic resources. Yep, let's start building it. 32 turns. We got that up. It's looking, it's looking a lot better. Alright, here we're short... Actually, we're short Hyperium. I sold too much. Let's see, we need one more turn of that and several more turns of Hyperium generation. Well... We'll deal with it next turn. So for right now, what uh, what is the status of our... Beerius, Beertus, and I think Eridanus will be... Yeah, Eridanus will definitely be higher production than Micro once the AI labor is finished. So Beerius is probably where we want to build the other one. 43 turns. That's a little slow. We can definitely work it out a little bit, though. And remember, once one of them's finished, we can uh, we can move this guy over, and he'll he'll help a lot. So we probably want to keep Opbot right where he is until this finishes, at the very least. Can we build any more? Yeah, this actually is quite good here. All right, so we'll keep Opbot in place until the AI li I AI labor is finished. At that point, we'll try to start the obelisk, and Opbot will jet to uh, go to a place where he can learn something. Okay, we can buy these guys out right now. Let's hold off. Okay, so we have access to large ships. What we don't have access to, unfortunately, is um, fighters and bombers, and I really want to see that system in action, but that might have to be a next game concern. So I guess let's, um... Those Hellraiser torpedoes are pretty okay. 50 DPS. Let's lean into energy weapons. Uh, but... Hold on a second. Didn't we get... Yeah, we should have access to... Oh no, the shield interference beam was the only beam that's made of adamantium. Well, we can get some uh, some more basic, not strategic resource dependent weapon systems as well. So advanced laser fighters do weapon da or do energy damage and don't require strategics. 
Uh, let's make this our next research. And maybe we'll hold off on production of, uh, of ships and stuff. We really do need to shoot some population over here, probably. We don't want to move anybody out of Eridanus, though, until Eridanus finishes the obelisk. Leo's not on the table as a production system, really. And Leo has pretty good food output. Actually, so does, so does Zeterbia. Maybe Zeterbia should send some population to Jaya. We just need to get some things done. Man, we need to get things done here too, though. Gia doesn't have any fertile planets. No. Quite the opposite. So we don't want to send over the nearest. Alright, we'll send over all three units of Valter population. And we'll keep people focused on the food planet so that the, the lost population is replaced quickly. But uh, Jay needs to have the population necessary to rebuild itself. Okay. Oh, somebody else got to the second trade company before we did. That's fine. Yeah, alright, we'll uh, we'll try to wait two more turns before devoting any more attention to this war. Should be able to finish these guys off pretty easily. And they destroyed another one of our... Well, on the plus side, the epigenetic crop seeding wasn't actually going to be very valuable here due to how low our population is now. So uh, we're not actually generating much food this way. But I'm annoyed, for sure. Looks like the civilian vessel ought to get there fairly soon. It's already covered a lot of the distance. Oh. Okay, cool. More resources for us. Not a lot, but... I think we probably don't care about these guys as much as I was thinking we might care about them. So I need 27 Hyperium, and I also need to make some money. Sorry, this is the wrong thing. Oh, we actually can't buy- there's no Hyperium for sale. Okay, we're gonna have to wait a couple of turns, unfortunately. Well, we certainly don't want to set, uh, sell any of these resources. We could sell a little bit of Quadranix. Yeah, stuff is in demand. Alright, let's sell some Hyperium. Or some Titanium, rather. Uh, hold on now, don't go crazy. Because remember, we do need a bunch of Titanium for the, uh, the Obelisks as well. Come on. Good loot. Okay, a little bit of titanium, that's fine. Pretty close to the edge of the galaxy, so I don't expect there will be anything out here, but let's... Let's just check. I wonder how the Lumaris are friend, feeling about this war. Tell me what the families can do for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're not interested in the truce. It's true they did win that fleet battle. Apparently that's got them thinking that they can uh, they can keep going. Oh yeah, I should probably still be building stuff. Well, we definitely want to increase our rate of strategic resource gain on an antimatter system. Leo doesn't really need to increase influence or anything. Yeah, we're fine. And Eridanus could... Yeah, this I mean this affects some of our planets, right? We have we have strategics on two of them. 
I'll help get the uh, get the obelisk done a little bit quicker. Yeah, it looks like the Lumeris. I, I wonder if they're maybe distracted by their uh, war with Red. Somebody remarked Beerus. That's not a big deal. Beerus is deep enough in our empire that we can uh, we can protect it. Opbot's level nine. He's getting there. All right. So plus fifty. Influence per trading company on Empire, plus 20 on system, plus 5% on system. It's certainly not bad. We'll stay here on Beerus. How far is he into level 9? Not very far. So this won't complete uh, level 9 for him. But it'll get him in the neighborhood. Then we'll move him to Pollux where he'll pick up more stuff. And it looks like... Yargosi is ready, so we may as well explore with it. I don't know that we'll ever settle another system. So if bad stuff happens to it, it's kind of whatever. Okay. Yeah, this thing is fast. A fast vessel. So some nebular clouds that we don't really have any interest in. Gia needs to... And I don't even know what Gia needs to build. I guess we're getting Quadranix here so we can build that, but we like... This place needs to be able to produce stuff. I imagine the Lumeris are not going to be super jazzed about me having ships in their... all up in their business. Speaking of which, uh, this might be a good time for you to get the hell out of there. I kind of can't believe he didn't get attacked. Alright, it would be really cool if we could start this obelisk. Let's ask the Sofans if they have any... Yeah, that's how we roll. <laughs> All right, man, calm down. I could really just use all of your Hyperion. They have strong feelings about that. Well, did they like the idea of a trade agreement? Because this could be useful. We don't have enough HQs and subsidiaries to make a ton of money off of it, but anything that increases our payouts, obviously. Uh, what if I gave you, in a, in exchange, some oh. dark glitter, I guess? Like, a bunch of it? Sure. Yeah, that, that could help plug some of the holes in our economy. Let's party. <laughs> this deal is pretty sweet. Uh, what about you? The faithful and the church welcome your contact with the Bodiani Protectorate. No, not 120. I wish it would delete the, uh... I keep forgetting that it doesn't do that. No, I just want 20. Delete. There, okay. Hmm. Wow, they are really not down with this. Uh... Okay. Nope. Science agreement? Does this stuff move you at all? Okay, and that's beneficial for us, too. And then we'll like uh, we'll give you some mushrooms to sort of make up the difference. Fifty, fifty mushrooms. No, fifty. There we go. These text fields are a little cantankerous. All right. Okay. I don't think we're making any headway here with the mushrooms. They don't seem to want them. All right, well, I'll keep those. We could sell them. How about attack? Because you're, I think, not even a danger to us in terms of victory. How about a tech that doesn't threaten me? Mm-hmm. Graviton research? There you go. Alright, that's a good deal. 43 turns. Okay, that doesn't actually change the number of turns, and hopefully it will produce enough extra industry. Yep. Four extra industry might might take a turn or two off of that. Your proposal pleases us. Okay.
All right, now let's consider some ship designs. Some ship designs that are not heavy on the strategic resources. Oh, this has ended. Okay, well, that's nice. Well, if it isn't our favorite empire, up to their usual japes. Yes, you guys are so... So very friendly. I'm not doing an alliance. We make supernovas look dull. But you're rocking your own thing pretty good. How about a deal? I don't think there's any benefit to allying with them. They're already involved in our war and everything. It requires a great deal of structure and order to build ships and execute businesses across the galaxy, and all of that while handling the affairs of billions of citizens. Precision and control are paramount. Without them, things could crumble into chaos, a terrifying thought. However, there is an agent of chaos loose in the galaxy, a strange being from a little-known species. I know these guys. Known only as the Photobomber, his pranks, thefts, and intrusions are destabilizing financial institutions and police forces on many systems. Every time the law comes close, the Photobomber slips away to appear somewhere else, in a new disguise, peddling new tricks and stealing new treats. It's time to put an end to this. It is time to impose a bit of order on the Photobomber's worrying activities. The governments of the galaxy have pooled their forces to bring him to justice. Whoever manages to pinpoint this slippery character will get the best of the donated rewards. Well, that's, uh... These aren't that great. I don't really care about this. Investigate all the marked curiosities. Search at least two to have a chance at a reward. Well, I mean, we have some ships. We have some guys running around. I guess we'll... We'll... You know, we'll investigate curiosities where we can. I'm not going to put any extra actual effort into this. Uh, can't really build anything that's going to give us dust here. Alright, out of curiosity, what is the luxury market like? These are not very valuable. But we can really, like, we can part with a lot of them without it making an actual difference to us. That's good. We are still really bleeding dust here. And if we put together some ships, that's only going to make things worse. Yeah, we might have to go back to 3D printing a little bit. So let's see, we're not going to have access to another obelisk build. We need 40 Quadranix, 80 Antimatter. Yeah, it's going to be a little while before we can start the next one. I probably shouldn't have started the one that's going to complete first. Well, but the the rewards for having one of these are significant. Yeah, all right. We're going to have to manage our resources carefully here. We're probably not going to be able to get any Quadranix from anybody, or um, or a Cal-6. So we just need to sit and wait on this. Nine turns is going to be enough. Eight turns is going to be enough. Hell, seven turns is going to be enough, because I'm good at math. No, it's not. That's going to get me to 30. I need 40, right? Yeah. Never mind. We actually need 11 turns before we've generated enough naturally. So in 11 turns, we'll be cool on this. We'll be a little bit short on titanium, but titanium's easy enough to get a hold of. All right. 11 turns is longer than I would like. Let's see what we can do about it. Well, first things first, we probably ought to research something that gives us dust. More industry would be nice, too. How long would it take us to pick up an endless tech? 19 turns? Plus 20 approval on all of our systems isn't even really that relevant, right? Yeah, a lot of our systems are quite happy already. So let's research a dust building. We just need something that produces dust. Pretty much anything. Yeah, that'll do. Atemporal Finance is a planet specialization that'll give us a lot of dust, and careful sweeping is 50 to 75 per system. That's a good start. Impactless Sites isn't bad.
Astrofinance, that Xenotourism agencies actually should be quite a bit of, uh, of dust as well. This is pretty good too. We, uh, we do have access to a lot of sterile worlds. Well, let's start with quantized economics. Oh, ships. Yep. Totally spaced. Blue will be back. We have to assume. So over here on Pollux. Food, I guess. Still no. Okay, we gotta make some ships. So... Advanced P-Laser Fighters. This is a... What kind of module is this? This is a weapons module. So let's pull all of these. Probably that too. Okay, these are weapon slash squadron slots is what it, what it is. Okay. So we get, get a couple of squadrons of P-Laser Fighters. We could put... something in here. We're actually... we're good enough on adamantium that we could afford to... or on antimatter, rather. That we could afford to spend some. These have very high DPS, a critical hit chance that is significant. They're only optimally effective at medium range. You know, I think there's something to be said for... Uh, just... wow, that's very expensive. Never mind. I was going to say, I think there's something to be said for just versatility. Yeah, that sucks, man. Those are really, really expensive. So the uh, the bigger circle here is an indication that this is a heavy mount. Uh, the module does double damage, but also costs more strategics. Ooh. All right. An energy damage booster. Ah, uh, we can't put... That's not a squadron slot. Uh, we could just put a non-strategic weapon module in there. It doesn't make me feel great. Nah, we, we just can't... We just can't afford to spend strategics on our ships right now. The, uh, the ship body alone costs five of each. We won't be able to do anything about that. But I think we're just going to have to... Uh, just going to have to eat the fact that these are not going to be totally ideal. So, support modules. Uh, can you show me... We have an obsolete uh, energy booster? We don't. So we have a normal projectile booster that doesn't require strategics. The only energy booster we have is this one. And it really, really jacks up the cost. Well, that's a shame. We'll put it in an A2S module so that we can orbit a planet and threaten it significantly. And this is going to have to be what it is. We could put a little bit of Hyperium into the engine just to speed the thing up. That's probably fine. We're not going to be bottlenecked on Hyperion. We're producing it fast enough. Okay, who wants to make me one of these things? What is the highest industry system? Beerius is the highest industry system that is not currently producing other stuff. Important stuff. So yeah, five turns to that thing's done. What, are, what is my fleet size at now? Still seven, really. We should probably fix that. Yeah, okay, plus two. Plus two command points is not amazing, but I'll take it. Yeah, and then I guess we're good. We're pretty much just waiting on constructions at this point.
Okay, well, a small amount of amianthoid, that's not really valuable to us, unfortunately. Alright, they're coming back. They're bringing... Energy weapons, projectile defenses. I said I didn't want to have to retrofit, but we probably have to retrofit. Okay, so what, what do we have here? Unfortunately, we uh, we can't retrofit the pirate vessels, actually. Well, crap. Where else do we have ships? Nowhere, really. We pretty much just lost them all. So we're looking at... 288 offense, 194 defense on the small ship. 1848 and 595 on the big ship. So it's just got more modern modules than ours, in addition to being well adapted against us. Now we have access to better basic modules than we used to. But these are still pretty sad. Yeah, that's not good. We are not ready for another fight. Well, my friend, tell me what the families can do for you. Hmm. What are the odds that we could buy them off? Let's just try to buy them off. The Lumeris understand the value of a good deal. We have access to some tech that we know they definitely don't have. But we don't want to give them anything that's a real threat to us either. Increasing their ability to research isn't such a big deal because they won't be able to use that research to put anything valuable into play against us before we could finish our... Um, our structures, anyway, our uh, obelisks. But hmm. yeah, so like this would be okay to give them. Yeah, they're not. It's not moving. I don't think they're interested in a truce. I think we're gonna have a really hard time with this. But if I give you a lot of mushrooms, uh, I mean it. It moved a little bit. All of this adamantioid, Am amianthoid. Um, yeah, shoot, we just don't, we don't have enough stuff to give them. I can't give them strategics because we need them. Ah. Okay. All right. That made some headway. All we really need is to not be at war for a little while. The tech's not budging them at all, though. Ah. I don't think we're going to be able to do this. We are at war. You test my patience contacting the Empire. Well, we could demand some resources from them. Let's keep this in mind. I don't think I want to do it right now. We'll let the thing fill up again. Um, but we'll demand some resources from them when we get close to being able to start the construction of the third obelisk, I suppose. For now, we need ships. Where else can we build... Ships. We can start building stuff at Gia, but it only has 108 industry, so I'm assuming... Yeah, it'll take forever. Uh... We're gonna have to swarm them with little ones. Okay, that doesn't even change anything, really. Yeah, we may lose Gia, though. We should swap the two carves that are 
on the planet, probably into that fleet. We're just gonna get torn up. Maybe it's not even worth it. Just keep them, uh, keep them in the hangar for when the real ships show up. Hey, Perseus is good at building stuff, right? Yeah, it's okay. What about a medium ship design? Could we make a long ship that's actually threatening to them? No, 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 not that, sorry. Let's see, 1266, we're, uh... We're ending up really, really far south of their defenses. It's like 1266 and 347 defense. Their frigates are just very, very elite. Well, it's better DPS. It's a lot better DPS, actually. Yeah, our missile systems are pretty good. They're very well defended against this kind of damage, though. Let's just say, let's just say it's all lasers. Everything effective at optimal range. Our DPS is actually higher with these, so we still only have the basic lasers. We must have found... Huh. No, these are the, the basic phase beams as well. I guess beams are just... You know, it's the lower crit rate, I guess, is the trade-off. Doesn't seem like much of a trade-off, though. Alright, how about mediums? How many turns are we talking about there? 1072... Hmm. This is not great. We are uh, we are in a position to lose some battles here. All right, the population, uh, the civilian population units are about to arrive, so that'll help. Uh, you don't really have the resources to do anything meaningful. Yeah, I guess just make money. You're not really accomplishing anything else. Okay. We have ships coming. We might be able to hold them off. Our infantry are a lot better than theirs are, are like our ground troops. Uh, not specifically infantry. So we might be able to keep them from conquering Gia. Not tolerate this. Uh no, I refuse to whatever. I'm not Boy oh boy, do I not have time for you right now. We discovered the home of the Lumeris. An atoll planet full of tropical islands and tropical storms is the home of the Lumeris civilization and the home base of the Lumeris families that rule it from behind the scenes. Their oceanic environment necessitated the ability to adapt to the water, yet the need to create fire and build advanced technologies drove them to the land. From there they are now challenging the heavens themselves, bringing their unique style of economic development to an unsuspecting galaxy. The Empire will not tolerate this. Okay. I'm really just not. I just don't have time to deal with you. I'm pretty sure we don't want to take that. It looks like the Lumeris are actually losing the economic or the, the pressure battle. So that's good for us. That might threaten them enough to dev devote their attention elsewhere. Okay, this ended. It looks like we did not get any negative consequences because nothing else triggered. Sirs, Kershaw is... I don't even know what to do with you, man. We need to get him up to the next tier before he has any more, like, really useful skills to, uh, to examine. Oh, I thought that... I thought this line emerging out was another star lane, but actually that's not anything. Well, what are we going to do with the Argosi? I kind of feel like its role in the story is just sort of done. We could send it to Origa. Eh, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. 
All right, building ships as fast as we can. So these guys are most effective at medium range. It would be best for us if we could stay at long. And their weapons are largely energy based, so shield absorption, I guess. We're, we're just gonna get wrecked here. We could retreat. The thing is, these ships aren't really retrofitable. These are, you know, pirate ships that we found or were given. So these ships will never have more value than they have right now. Right? The, uh,. The technological progress of the galaxy is going to mean everybody else's ships keep getting better. So I guess using these guys right now is probably the best thing we can do. Let's go to the advanced view, drag this, uh, this cell over to the long range bay. And we'll just fight it out like this. We'll lose, but we'll probably do some damage at least. No, we will not, in fact, do some damage. Okay, well that's not ideal. They have a lot of manpower on those vessels. We certainly don't want to send any ships over until we have, like, a group of ships to send over. Oh, Perseus is producing, but Perseus doesn't actually have a portal. The portal's on Rookbat. The ships from Perseus are going to be a little slow to get over there. Alright, they aren't launching a ground invasion just yet. Ah, maybe they intend to invade a different system. No, they're actually... They went through Beertus and they're headed to Red Territory. How dare you threaten the Empire? Okay. Well, that guy's a problem, sort of. He doesn't really seem to have any ships, right? Like... Maybe they're all just very busy. I guess he's fighting yellow. So he has a couple of... A couple of pretty poorly developed ships here, like... Yeah, I'm not really afraid of him. Maybe we should just take Talitha. Now the thing is, we don't really need Talitha. It does have 14 population, and it might be well developed enough for it to be a consideration for our third obelisk. I suppose that's a possibility. Okay, massive damage done to attackers during ground battles, plus defending troop health. Yeah, let's go ahead and pick that up, and then I guess we'll, uh... When we see enemies headed for a planet again, we can just pop her over to play defense. The remnants you once welcomed as refugees are now thriving members of your empire. Android beings who were once experts in assassination, they come forward claiming to understand many of the inner workings of the exotic military modules you have recently researched. Will you accept their aid in the implementation and installation of your latest military technology? They insist they wish to help your empire out of gratitude, but distrustful military technologists would prefer they keep away from such dangerous toys. So we could refuse, it'll hurt our retrofit costs. Uh, I don't... We're not going to be doing any retrofitting, and this will increase our manpower refill rate. I don't really want to increase military, uh, militarist political ideology, though. Yeah, alright, we'll accept their help. Just because I don't want the militarists to get any ideas. Okay. We get to build a new trading company. Which will certainly help with our uh, our dust problems. Drift buds, huh? I think that's the first time I've ever seen that particular luxury. Well, hold on. Let's pop out to the economic view for a second here.
I'm not exactly sure how trade companies work when there aren't star lanes. Like, if we built a trade company headquarters on Beerus and then, like, a subsidiary on Micro, would that work? Hmm. Do we have vision of wormholes yet? Did I ever bother to pick that tech up? I did not. That might be a thing worth doing. So obviously we want more dust. Um, where do I want to... Where do I want to build a headquarters? We could build it on Rookbat. And then build the subsidiary on Micra if it turns out that we can't make use of these systems over here. Because Rookbat's not currently doing anything else. Yeah. The problem is, so many of our systems are doing things that are really important. Um, oh, hey, we finished that economic tech, didn't we? I could be switching a lot of planets over to atemporal finance, especially sterile worlds would benefit from this. So, yeah, like this one. Uh, population's pretty low on these other planets, and actually we do need them to stay industry-focused if we're going to get that trading company finished. Who's not doing anything, like, terribly important? I did actually... We don't need the industry on these worlds very much. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, Aridanus is busy, although... Would it even add a turn? Okay, that adds a turn. So we could do one changeover. Although, I guess we need the industry, never mind. That's right, we're doing a thing that we need industry for. Okay, we can queue this stuff up after the ship construction is finished. And in fact, we should probably colonize this last available world here, too. Alright, so we'll send those guys to Leo to meet up with the ships that are being produced on Leo, and then portal over to Gia. I just say, I'm pretty surprised that Blue... I, I guess this ship was just taking a path to Red that was relatively short. Not really focused on us. So what is glowing here? Is this one of the... Uh... Your fleet doesn't fill, doesn't fill the quest requirement. That's weird. What is the quest requirement? Is there some other quest? There's not. There's not another quest that is based on um, hunting down anomalies. So I'm not really sure what it means by that. I guess we'll send the fleet over there. We'll see if maybe it's just that it's just erroring out in a weird way because of the fact that we're not actually present at the anomaly. Okay, and... Opbot Ambirius. Uh, probably the production of this ship is going to be worth a fair amount of uh, XP, so I guess we'll leave him there. The quest is unlikely to result in a serious change to our method of acquiring victory, but I do still want to see the end of it, right? Merge these guys up and send them to Jia. And then disband them into the hangar. The Empire will not tolerate this. We're so brilliant, we make super... All right, I, I still think there's not really a good reason to take Talitha. We might be able to make a demand on him now. We are at war. You test my patience contacting the Empire. I guess, hold on. Where are we at on resources? So we need another seven turns of generation on this. Probably. 
in seven turns, we're going to have a hundred Hyperium and only 88 Titanium. So we need Hyperium and Titanium, actually. We'll be totally fine on Antimatter and Adamantium. These are the two that are going to be the stumbling block, weirdly enough. So let's, uh, let's ask him for some of those. This had better be good. One meeting with you was already one too many today. I would like your Hyperium. If you do not give it to me, I will blow up your economy again. The Empire will not tolerate this. Okay. Yeah, and then that resets our uh, development a little bit. So if we actually took his system, we would lose a lot of our influence generation on him. Uh, almost half of it. So I think we'll just uh, we'll just keep generating influence. I don't know. Just chill. There's really really nothing for you to do anymore. Well, we're getting there. We're not getting there super fast. Oh, we unlocked a new battle tactics slot. That's cool, I guess. So I'm pretty sure we can't earn these rewards before earning these ones. So I don't think that there's a strong reason for us to research another thing in this uh, in this tier. So we probably want to go back to trying to get uh, trying to get industry buildings up. We do need a lot of dust uh, still, obviously. But is, would I be better off just re researching some, one of the very expensive things in the top tier? Plus ten percent dust. You can get a more effective uh, convert industry into dust ability. Yeah, honestly, we just don't... Man, I just don't have income. There's not even a lot of cool things for us to uh, pick up to help us out with that. Yeah, we're just going to be broke forever. Desperately selling luxury resources to get by. Hell yeah. Okay, I bought. We are going to. How dare you threaten the yam? Okay, that's fine. I don't care about that. I don't care about your borders. They're within my borders anyway. Right, let's unassign a bot. Then reassign, then uh, rebuild him as a ship. I guess on Pollux, right? It's better for him to be a fleet on Pollux than a fleet on Micra because he can make most of the distance in a lane. So create fleet on Pollux. Actually, hold up. Can we upgrade his ship engines? Would that be helpful? Probably. We can just give him more engines. Look at all that move. That was that was pretty cheap. That was worth doing, probably. Okay. We're so brilliant. We made supernovas look dull. But you and they would pay us for an alliance. You know, if they uh, if they come back with that offer and that number is a little higher, we might go for it. Okay, a little bit of Quadranix. You know, we actually could sell... Wow. That's a good system. How, how big are those deposits? Average and average. So those are both plus threes. Yeah, that's a pretty good system. Well, let's see here.
I honestly don't know what to do with this uh, with this system. It's kind of just like it's kind of doing the thing I wanted to do just by having population on this world. Okay, where is another curiosity to search? Come over here to Ursa. So yeah, let's sell a little bit of Quadrinix. We have more than we need. That'll keep us going for a while. Let's update, upgrade that guy to the new design. And now we have, like... We have an okay defense. Theoretically, there are still pirates coming. You no, know, I'm just gonna buy off the mark. I don't really want even want to have to deal with it. Okay, now we're ready to defend Jaya if the Lumeris should return. In fact, the Lumeris have gone to. Oh. Yep, that's that's fair. <laughs> Uh, I believe we'll be destroyed if we retreat. Oh no, that's right. This isn't, uh, this is neutral territory. And we now have wormholes visible. So... From Rookbat, there is a route that leads to the other, uh, the other worlds. So once we finish that trade company headquarters, we'll make the subsidiary, like, on Beertus or something. And that'll, uh... That should be all right. Trade companies don't make a huge amount of money if you can't really invest in them, which we can't. But it's better than nothing. Ah, careful sweeping requires so much adamantium. Adamantian. It is not what Wolverine is made of. Well, 25 adamantian is an amount we can part with. We can't do it more than once. So it'd be best to do this on a system that is level 3. Do we have one of those? Available? We don't. Perseus is... Okay, Perseus is level 3. Yeah, let's do that. Man, these portals are really nice. Okay, we have 19 command points now, so... Uh... We can put together a pretty alright sized fleet. We can actually go threaten blue with this, probably. What's the manpower of this fleet? 133 tanks. Yeah, that seems okay. Well... I guess there's still scouting to do. Okay, and then Leo. Leo's ecstatic, so... I oh, know Leo has the, uh, the thing that generates influence based on your happiness. Well, I guess we'll just put it into printing? Not really a lot else for this particular world to do. Or this particular system. It's already maxed out on population and everything. Furious could be... Yeah, we can get some of this weird luxury that I've never seen before. Alright, we'll try to fix up our influence here. Because if the UE manages to get our system inside of their influence bubble from their capital, that's actually going to really mess with our pressure on them. Pirate Mark was placed on Beertus. I'm not going to buy that one off. Obviously, our massive fleet is right there. Okay. The Great Orrery has ticked on, revealing its mechanisms grudgingly. Finally, after these centuries of running and seeking, we can finally stop and think. We have learned the fate of our kin, come to grips with our past, and flushed the demons out, out of our dreams, I'm assuming. And I... I have found a place in the galaxy for my people, and been reunited with a daughter who I was sure had become part of the Orrery. The Vaulters are reunited and reinvigorated. There is a galaxy out there to be explored and controlled, and beyond that, uncountable other galaxies. 
Forward, Vaulters, beyond the stars. Okay, so we've been given the planet, and it has foundlings population on it, which are just plus three science. That's not bad. Those are not uh, those are not bad population. Okay, and good resources. However, it is mutinous. And actually, it's kind of damaged our approval levels everywhere, having this. Well... What can we do about that? How, how happy can we make them? Honestly, probably not that happy. Does Opbot have uh, approval skills on him? He does not. I'm gonna pop him back to a different system then. Or wait, actually his yeah, his reassignment cooldown isn't up. Never mind. Well, I'm gonna have him I don't know, come to Jaya, I guess. He can join this fleet. Just kinda of hover here and wait. And when his assignment cooldown comes up, we'll put him back in Beerius, maybe? His um his extra influence will be helpful. So now we've finished our faction quest. Boy, what are we going to do here? We do have a sterile world, and it's the colonized one. So, yeah, actually, I guess that's going to be pretty helpful. Yeah, alright, we finished our faction quest. We got a pretty good world. I have to say I'm a little... a little disappointed. Given all the effort we put in to get it, it could have been a little better. Uh, and we are well on our way to our victory condition. I'd like to speed these up a little bit. We might be able to find a way to do that. But that's going to have to be it for us for today. I did not even realize how much time has passed. Come back next time, tomorrow. And we're going to push real hard on these obelisks and maybe make some serious progress toward a victory. And we'll see you then.